So we built a representation that we call two's complement. The top bit is negative, all the other bits are positive. The other important thing to remember is that we now have to say how big our representation is because that top bit being negative can mess stuff up if different numbers have different sizes and different bits that are negative. So we're gonna say our two's complement representation is always certain size. It can be whatever size you want, but when we're doing the math, the size has to stay consistent. And so we'll see some of the challenges with that as we go. So in this example, we're using seven bit two's complement representations. Let's look at some of the features of this representation. If we put all zeros into this representation, this is one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64 for this example. So this is negative 64 and all of these are positive 32 down to positive one. And if we add all those zeros together, we get zero. Not only that, there is exactly one way to represent zero. So that's good. Uh, in our signed uh, magnitude representation, we had multiple zeros, which is problematic. Now, let's see what happens if we put all value in the positive place values and no value in the negative place values. Looks like this, because only our top place value is negative, everything else is positive. So if we add all of these things up in our seven bit representation, we get one and two and four and eight and 16 and 32. We add those up, we get 63 in base 10. The largest negative number is the opposite. We have all value in the negative place values and no value in the positive place values. And if we add that up, all we have is the one. And so this is in a seven bit representation, negative 64. Now this is key because if the biggest negative number is bigger than in absolute value, the biggest positive number, then that means that we have a great little extra feature, which is that that top bit tells us whether the whole number is negative or positive, right? Because if that top bit is a one, there's nothing you can do in the other bottom bits to make the value be bigger than zero, right? Because if you, if you put all of the numbers together, if, if the top bit is one and all the other numbers are one, you get minus 64 plus 63, you get negative one. So all numbers with one at the top bit are negative. And in fact, all numbers with zero at the top bit are positive because there's no other way to get negative value there because the only bit that has negative value is the top bit. So now we can look at that top bit and say, if it's zero, we know that that number is a positive number. And if it's one, we know that that number is a negative number. And that means the top bit of a two's complement number can be interpreted as the sign bit, which is great. So we can just look at one bit and say, is it negative or positive? Which was the whole point in the first place. That's why we tried sign magnitude because we wanted to have a bit that we could look at and say, this number's positive, that number's negative. So that's really good. In seven bits, the range then is we can have numbers from negative 64 to positive 63. And in general, we have numbers from negative two to the n minus one to two to the n minus one minus one. Why n minus one? Well, because the first bit is two to the zero. So a one bit representation has two to the zero. Two bits is two to the one and two to the zero. And seven bits is two to the six, two to the five, two to the four, three, two, one, and zero. So two to the six is our biggest negative number. And two to the six minus one is our biggest positive number in a seven bit representation. So we should now remind ourselves that the two's complement representation works the way it does. And we can do that by looking now at just plain positive numbers and seeing how they work. We need those numbers to have zeros at the front of them now. Because if we just have a number that is, that is, you know, we don't know what size the representation is, we assume that it is the right size for the number of bits. And if we start with a number that has a one at the front, right? If we start with a number that has a one at the front, um, this is one and two and four and eight, which is 13, right? That's positive 13. But if we say this is two's complement, we have to assume that that top bit is negative. And so in fact, in two's complement, this would be negative eight plus four plus one, negative eight plus four is negative four, would be negative three. If we wanna write positive 13, we have to write zero, one, one, zero, one. Because then we know that the top bit is not, have any value in it, is therefore not negative, and the whole representation is then positive. 
The other thing that's important is to be able to take a negative number and convert it into a positive number by changing its sign. Now, when you change the sign of a two's complement number, you flip the bits and add one. This is how we got from the positive value to the negative value. But if we do that again, we should get the original positive value back again, right? It, intuitively, if you think I want to undo that change, I would have to first subtract one and then flip the bits. And yeah, that'll work, but the whole point was to not have to subtract. So if we flip the bits and add one, and then flip the bits and add one again, we should get back to our original number. And that's in fact what happens. Here's an example. Positive 17 looks like this. Negative 17 then looks like that. And you can do the math to prove it to yourself. And then if you flip the bits and add one again, we get back the original number, which is great. It's what should happen. But it also seems a little weird. How could it be that you add one and add one and add one, and you still get back the original number again? Because flipping the bits is actually subtracting value in the first place. So if you flip the bits and add one twice, you get the original number back again, which of course you should, but it's a little bit weird. Uh, and it's important to sort of recognize the weirdness of that. In, um, in the description of this process, we actually have the word two's complement twice. Two's complement corresponds to the representation, which allows us to have negative and positive numbers in the same place, but it also refers to the operation, the, the, uh, the act of changing a value from a negative value into a positive value or vice versa. So to take the two's complement is a verb and two's complement itself is a noun. So be careful in assignments if I say, what is the two's complement value of this number? That doesn't necessarily mean convert it to negative. That might mean just give me what its value is in a two's complement representation. So just be aware of those things. Now, when it comes to actually using this representation to perform mathematics, what we find is we can subtract by adding. So here's a negative, here's a positive number, here's a negative number, and these are the bit position representations in this seven bit representation. Remember, the top bit, it corresponds to negative 2 to the 6 now, instead of positive 2 to the 6. And so if we add 43, if we add negative 43 to 50, we should get 7. And you can see the math here. If we add negative 43, this value is negative 43. And if we add that to 7, we add them all together. 1 and 1 is 0, carry the 1, 0, carry the 1. We get 7, mostly. There's this extra one here, which we're just going to ignore for now. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Because this place value here is the place value that is negative. And that means it has to be the top of the representation because there's nothing beyond the negative place value. So if something goes beyond that, for now, we're just going to ignore it. This will be a problem and we will have to address it. But for now, we'll just ignore it and recognize that if we subtract 43 from 50 by adding negative 43 to 50, we get the number we expect, which is kind of exciting. So now there's a bit of practice. I'm going to encourage you to try these. I'm going to skip over these. <laughs> you can maybe take a screenshot. Now this is what makes it really, really cool because if the point of subtracting by adding is to make a negative number by flipping the bits and adding one, we need some way to flip the bits and add one. And we can do that with uh, exclusive OR gate. Remember, an exclusive OR gate allows us to flip the bits in a controlled way. If the input is 1, the output is the opposite of the input. If the input is 0, the output is the same as the input. So if we put a 0 here into this, this is a full adder, a string of full adders. If we put a 0 here, then this passes through as B, and this passes through as B, and this passes through as B, and everything works fine. If we put a one there, then, and you might wonder about this, and I'll tell you about that in a second, then this becomes negative b, negative b, right? Negative b zero, negative b one, negative b two. We flip the bits, but how do we add one, you ask? Well, ha, this is why it's so cool. Because we have, at the least significant bit of our full adder, we have this carry in that we just ignored. We set it to zero, because how could you carry in from a value below the first bit. Well, you can carry in a one when you're flipping the bits and adding one. So this means we can flip the bits and add one to our existing full adder without making any changes at all, except adding these exclusive OR gates to the front. It's very, very cool. So this means that with the two's complement representation, 
we can add and subtract using the same device. All we have to do is convert the number into a negative number before we send it into the uh, full adder. And this means we can subtract two positive numbers. The positive number becomes negative by flipping the bits and adding one, and then we subtract, right? Or we can add two negative numbers together. The negative numbers just process into the adder, and because of the representation, a negative plus a negative will add together and give us the proper result. It simplifies everything and is a very, very cool uh, sort of trick of mathematics that allows us to represent negative numbers as uh, in our same representation and add or subtract them at will.